Okay, good afternoon. My name is Kirk McDowell. I'm the founder of The Challenge Call. And today I'm uh, here to talk to you about <clears throat> a workshop that's happening uh, very shortly, May 19th, here in South Austin. I'll uh, give people a minute to arrive. But uh, okay, so uh, it's Empowering Austin Now, and the topic is Conscious Entrepreneurship. So I'm really excited to be part of it. Let me, let me, get, let me adjust my lighting here. Okay. Thought I had all that worked out. Okay, there we go. So, all right. So, uh, May 19th, uh, this, uh, uh, Saturday, a week and a half, um, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the topic is conscious leadership. So, at noon, I'll be doing a talk on uh, contribution selling. So, here's, uh, here's, here's my premise. Uh, a lot of people get into business uh, because of something they're passionate about. They're really excited about whatever it is that they do. It may be artistic, <clears throat> it may be business related, it can be anything in between. But people get into business, an engineer gets into business because he likes being an en engineer. <clears throat> an accountant gets into business because they like working with numbers. Excuse me. An artist gets into business because, you know, to sell their work because they love art, you know. And so um, on and on down the line. So people often get into business because there's something that they're passionate about. And usually that something is not selling. <laughs> that's not always true. A lot of people are passionate about selling. I, I'm actually one of those people, but that's another conversation for another day. But um, so... People find themselves in business for reasons that have to do with you know, interest and passion and desire, often a desire to be of service, a desire to help people, uh, to be, be the solution for some problem that people have, you know? And so, well, that's why get, people get into business. And then there's a uncomfortable moment when people get confronted with sort of the uh-oh of, oh, you know, business only happens when, when money changes hands. And um, I, I don't like that, and I don't like to do that, and I don't want to be a salesperson, and I don't want to close people, and I don't want to, I just don't want to be that. I just don't want to do that, right? And I wouldn't be very good at it anyway. So, so there you are. You're an entrepreneur. You're really passionate about what you're passionate about, what you're in business for. And all of a sudden, you're confronted with the whole car, cold, hard reality that, you know, your business really functions on cash. It doesn't function on whatever it is that you do, or whatever it is that excites you, it functions on cash, and cash happens when somebody buys your product or service, you know. So, kind of a conundrum, right? So, um, uh, the next piece is, take a look and see why you have such a, well first of all, just look and see if you have baggage around the idea of salesperson, or around the idea of selling. So, you know, bad experiences, um, failed attempts, uh, comments people have made, things you see on TV, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, um, so uh, you know, so a lot of that is probably well-deserved, right? Because um, many salespeople uh, are highly manipulative in nature, right? Or at least in practice. We don't have to in practice, like how they're trained is to listen to you for what they're gonna use to put the clothes on you, you know, right? And people people know that, people feel that, and it's a sort of an adversarial kind of situation, right? So yeah, nobody wants to be part of that, I totally get it. But uh, I'm gonna talk to you about something completely different, transformational in nature. Uh, and by transformational, I don't mean it feels real good or it's real nifty or neat. I mean transformational, like it'll make something available that is not available right now. Like it'll literally transform what's possible or what's available in your, and in this case, your ability to sell what you do or what you have and your entire complete experience of the whole thing. <laughs> and it's not manipulative at all. It's not manipulative at all, right? So. Now I'm going to introduce contribution selling. So contribution selling, what the heck is that? So um, the selling part is just, you know, that it's transactional, right? The contribution part is that um, 
Transactional meaning, you know, money changes hands. Contribution part is the whole crux of the biscuit. So have you noticed that there's been people in your life that you've considered doing business with that uh, you didn't want to do business with? <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, you, had, you had an experience with a salesperson and it just you didn't like their vibe, you didn't dig where they were coming from, how they were talking to you, you felt lied to and disrespected and demeaned perhaps, you know. Uh, and so uh, you may or may not have done business with them, but if you did, it was in spite of the salesperson, right? Now, you also probably could think of occasions where you were working with a salesperson and it was awesome. And it was awesome, and not only was it awesome, but you were literally wanted to do business with that salesperson. There was something about that person that's like, yeah, that's, that's my person. That's, that's what I want to do business with. So I think we've all had those experiences. So if you just extrapolate that out, extrapolate that out a little bit, the next question is, how do you be the person that people want to do business with? So here's your first task, is you have to actually be somebody that people want to do business with. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, that's interesting. So, to be someone that somebody wants to do business with, it's probably not going to include being manipulative, being forceful, applying pressure, lying. It's probably not going to include that, right? Because people hate that. <laughs> being talked at, being sold, literally. You know, people hate that. Right? So what if there was another approach that was purely contributory in nature? Right? Now everything that I'm talking about assumes that your service is awesome and or your product is amazing. Like, so none of this works or is intended for anything other than just awesome, you know, service or product for people, right? So this is not intended to uh, make up for any lack of uh, one's ability to provide excellent service. Yeah. Okay, good. So, all right, good. So, um, so, what if the entire transaction or the entire inter interaction was completely contributory in nature? So, first of all, you would have to get yourself out of the way, right? Because what makes someone someone you want to do business with? are likely things like, you know, they're really present. They know what they're doing. You can tell they have your best interest at heart. Um, uh, they're patient, kind, gentle, friendly, fun to be around, right? Right? So, now everybody's got their own flavor, you know, some people like their, people they talk with, more talkative or less talkative or whatever, but there's some, oh, being safe is a quality, a very important quality. And being someone, you know, if you think about the people you really wanted to do business with, probably what was included in there, and there would be some other things too, and not everything I mentioned, but, you know, safe, competent, if not masterful, fun, uh, informed, um, um, easy, to, easy to be with, you know, just some people are just easy to be with, right? Uh, patient, kind, gentle, those are things that, um, credible, you know, professional, those are things that engender um, trust. Trust is a big word. Safe, safety and trust. Okay. So, you, one thing you would have to start doing is starting to take a look at what are the things about you, right, that would, that make you, that make you less desirable to do business with, right? Do you rub people the wrong way? Do you interrupt people? Do you gossip? Do you complain? Do you uh, um, tell stories when people want to get down to talking about business or, you know, whatever, whatever your thing is. Everybody's got their thing, okay? So if you tell me you got all that worked out, I'm going to not believe you. <laughs> if I knew you better, I'd say it differently. Uh, and that's true of me too, right? So we all have our weaknesses and tendencies and whatever, right? But the biggest thing to do is to get your personal agenda out of the way, right? Your personal agenda, because if you're there to be a contribution or to be of service, that really doesn't include you 
imposing an artificial timeline or an artificial urgency or an artificial problem that would be weird and inappropriate if all you were doing was being there to contribute, applying your knowledge and your commitments and your ability to, um, you know, be of service, right? Uh, if, you, if that's all you're bringing, then it's actually a really simple conversation and it looks something like this, right? So, you know, you meet someone, there's, there's an engagement of some sort, right? Phone, meeting, whatever. And the first thing is you've got to give people a minute to get into the, this new space, this new space of you're now with them, right? So they were doing something else and now you're there, in phone or in person, you're there. And now you have to kind of give them a minute to, oh, let me get situated. Let me clear my head. Let me, you know, pause for a minute. Let me take a breath, right? That's real for people, right? So you don't want to just explode all over someone. You know, hey, wow, you know. Give people, give, give people half a minute, right? So, hey, how you doing? Is this time still work for you? Do, do, do you need to take a minute and settle anything? You know, give, give people a minute to arrive on location, as I call it. Right? People's bodies get on location way before they do. Right? So now that's what being social looks like. That's what small talk looks like. You know, maybe someone is in the habit of talking about the weather when they meet someone. Well I'm not really that's not really my favorite topic personally, right? But I'm not there for me personally. I'm there to give that person a moment to get used to they're with me now. And if how they like to do that is talk about the weather for a minute or their favorite sports team or whatever, that's fine with me. I don't, I'm not offended by that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to drive that conversation, but I'll let it work itself out, right? And so when they're ready, I can tell because when they're ready, I can tell because, I know I said that twice, because, <laughs> that wasn't a glitch in the matrix, uh, because there would be a pause, you know, hey, how you doing, da, 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 that sort of automatic social lubricant kind of conversation, right? Just kind of let that be tuned in, don't be aloof, or that's one of my weaknesses, being aloof, right? So tune in and be interested, right? Respond appropriately and be with them, right? And just kind of let that go. And then the conversation gets into like an inquiry, uh, a detective story. You know, you're looking for clues. What you're looking for is where you can be of the most contribution, the highest service to this individual, right? This, and it, that's prob probably related to what you sell or what you do for a living, right? But you're now on a hunt for not what you could use to close them with. No, stop doing that. You're really on a hunt for what you can use to be of service, right? You're listening for the blind spot. You're listening for the thing they missed. You're listening for somehow your product or service uniquely would really make a difference here, right? And you may conclude that it's not your product or service they need, then you should definitely tell them that. Refer them powerfully on. And then you can get some nice brownie points on the back end, but that's another conversation. Um, but, uh, but you're listening for how you can be of service, right? And then once you feel like you got the whole picture, right, you really have to listen here. You have to resist the temptation not to be an expert. You have to resist the temptation to be an expert, right? Just try to be quiet. I know that's hard for a lot of people. And everybody thinks they're really good at it, and almost nobody is. So um, uh, just listen, take notes, do whatever you do, but get the world of it, right? Get what their problem is. Where are they stopped? What's the what's the what's 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 the stop in the middle of the road, right? What's the roadblock? So once you think you got it, then ask for permission to read it back to them. And I don't mean read it back to them, but ask for permission to share it back to them, right? in a way that they get that you get it, right? They're now talking to someone who finally understands their problem. Finally, somebody understands my problem. That's like a momentous occasion for a lot of people. It is for me, oh my gosh. So, uh, so you're ha you've had a conversation, you've given them a minute to be social and get used to you, you know, uh, you're safe and you're warm and you're credible. Then you get into a diagnostic, investigatory, inquiry style conversation, right? And you, uh, you're on a hunt for what's the thing that would make the biggest difference, right? So now you have a theory, right? This is the theory. I know you're an expert, but just relate to it like a theory for a minute. And then you have a conversation with the customer, with this person, uh, investigating whether or not what you heard is what they meant. Like if you really got it, right? 
And then that really also shows professionalism and respect. You know, it's, you know you would, it would be weird if you went to a doctor's office and the minute you walked in, um, they handed you uh, your prescription. And be like, wait a minute, I haven't told you what the problem is. Oh, don't worry, I'm an expert. <laughs> you might be an expert, but I haven't told you what my problem is, right? So salespeople do this all the time. Entrepreneurs and you know, business people do this all the time, right? Because they're, they're, they're self-oriented, they're self-centric, right? They tend to see their product as opposed to seeing other people's issues, right? So anyway, you read it back to them, and if you, if you nail it, right, they'll have the experience of being known and appreciated and being with a professional, and oh my gosh, maybe, maybe there is some light at the end of this tunnel, maybe this is, my, this is my person here who can solve my problem, right? That's a big deal, right? So now, you, you, they've, shared their, they've shared their whole world, you get it, and now you have a theory, right? You have a theory as to what would be the awesome solution to what they're dealing with. Right? I'm assuming in this case, so let's assume in this case, this theory includes your product or service. If it doesn't include your product or service, it's what's, if what's best for them is to do business with someone else, you should definitely refer them on. Right? However, in this scenario, you have a theory and your theory includes you. It includes you being of service to this person. Right? So then you simply ask for permission. It could sound something like this. Hey, I think I got it. This is after they confirmed that you got it, right? So, hey, I think I got it. I, I have an idea or a couple of ideas that I think would really, really, really make a difference. With your permission, I'd like to just take a moment or two and just, you know, share fully what I have in mind. You know, who, who's going to say no to that? Especially if you've done the other steps, which is really just being with somebody else. Um, and then um, they say yes, right? Now you have an opening about as wide as a Mack truck, right? Just share. Now, what do I mean by share? I've used that word, that may sound weird. Uh, sharing. Don't sell them, don't talk at them, right? Humbly share what you see as possible. Right? Given what you said, here's what I'm seeing. Da 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 da, da 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 da, this and this, and you put this in place and put that in place and train these folks and, you know, whatever. And this is gonna pr produce this outcome for you. I'm really excited about that, what do you think? Right, that's very different than beating somebody over the head with your opinion, right? People, people, get, people get beat over the head with every, everybody else's opinion all day long, right? So don't be one of those people, right? So sh just share, like you have an idea, you're excited about it, you have a theory, you have a possible solution, share, you know, and be bold and be, you know, let them have it, like share fully. Be, elo be eloquent. Don't repeat yourself 30 times. You know, I understand you want to tell them what you told them and then tell them and then tell them what you just told them. That's great. But get to the point, right? Just get to it. Don't, don't take 30 minutes on this. And, uh, you know, present your thoughts. Present your solution. It, and, and don't be tricky. Don't come up with the closing question. So would you like to start Wednesday or Thursday? Look, have a conver have, be an adult and have a conversation with another adult about a possible way forward with something that's important to them, right? That's very different than you closing them, <laughs> right? So you're talking to them, you've shared your solution, you can get some feedback as to how you're doing, you know? Are you, are you, communi are, are they hearing what they want to hear or are they not, you know, you, you can communicate. Uh, don't handle objections, don't do that. If you're handling objections, you're in an adversarial conversation, right? So that's, we don't do that anymore, right? Um, if they have a question, have a conversation with them to get their question answered. Can you hear the difference? You know? Like, you know, oh, I thought it was gonna do this instead of that. Okay, good, well, let's, let's talk about that. So let me make sure I got it. What, what, what did you think it was gonna do? Okay, good. So let me, let me so let's take a look at that. Why is that important? And, you know, let's get to the bottom of what, is, what, what does that solve? And maybe that knocks you out and maybe it doesn't, but just keep having conversations that open something up, right? You can't do that by beating people, beating people up, right? You have to actually be interested in them and their success. So this is not a tactic. I can't stress that enough. And you could be listening like, oh yeah, yeah, I know it's not a tactic, but you know, no, it's not a tactic. You have to actually be interested in people succeeding in what you're there for, right? And um, and then, you know, 
if what you provide doesn't have them succeed, then, you know, game over, right? And if what you provide does have them succeed, share fully why you think that's so, right? And share fully and make them an offer. Hey, I'm so excited. I'd love to work with you. Let's, how about this, you know? Now, that's all very generalized and stylized because it's, it's general, you know, so where the, where the rubber meets the road is how to apply these conversations to what exactly it is that you do, right? And what is your, your selling, you know, or, or but, but what's, what's transformational about this is it goes from, you know, trying to do something to people, right? It goes from there to learning how to have conversations and learning how to listen in such a way that you can hear what it is that you can do for people, right? And where to start that from is, you know, constituting yourself in a way that you are someone that people would actually like to do business with. And in this training, I'm recommending you constitute yourself as, you know, someone who is a contribution. Like, be a contribution in your business dealings. Be a contribution in how you organize, how you think about your service or your product. And then you can, whenever you have an opportunity, you can share because, you know, it's just, you're not trying to do anything to anybody, you see? So, this is a taste. Uh, I have, I'm working on a book that'll be right. I just talked to my co-author and uh, we're still about a month out to actually having something. But, uh, but we're moving forward, super exciting, contribution selling. And then what I'm talking to you about today is the Empowering Austin Now series work, a series of workshops. This is uh, Ian 6, and it is uh, May 19th. It's coming up, uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and I'll be speaking uh, for an hour uh, on contribution selling, and the topic of the whole day is conscious entrepreneurship. So what I have to offer is a conscious, transformed approach to selling, uh, and my sort of evil plan is um, if, if I'm going to cha transform the world, uh, business is going to have to be included. And if I can get them on the sales part, then, then we got them. We, we got a chance to actually transform the world. If we can include business, and there's no other, no better way to get a business person's attention in, other than, you know, besides, uh, hey, I can help you increase your sales and have a great time. So really it is that, you know, um, I'm committed to entrepreneurs get to succeed in their passions, get to succeed in their business endeavors, and get to have the experience of sharing, sharing what's important to them and sharing their passion to the world. So Kirk McDowell, um, owner and founder of The Challenge Call. You can find out more about me at kirkmcdowell.com, and I would love to see you May 19th uh, at Ian 6. Uh, and I'll be speaking at noon. The event starts at 10, but be there at noon for sure. All right, thanks a lot.